Hello, I'm Matt Mori with the Applications Team for Texas Instruments Hercules Safety Microcontroller Group. Today I'm going to show you how to use the Halcogen and CoComposer Studio tools to quickly evaluate the MIPSPY module. The MIPSPY module is a 16-bit, configurable, synchronous, multi-buffered, multi-pin, serial peripheral interface. It is a programmable link shift register that is generally used for high-speed communication between external peripherals or other microcontrollers. Compatibility mode of the MIPSPY makes it behave exactly like a standard platform SPI module and ensures full compatibility with other SPIs. The MIPSPY includes several safety features such as parity error detection on all reads, detection of slave desynchronization, and detection of a mismatch in data length. In this exercise, we are going to use Halcogen to generate the MIPSPY driver. We will then use CoComposer Studio to write code that uses the MIPSPY module. To complete this exercise, we will need a Windows-based PC and a TMS570 or RM Hercules development kit. We will also need Halcogen and CoComposer Studio. To get started, you need to have Halcogen installed. If you do not already have Halcogen, you can download it from the tools and software area on the website ti.com slash Hercules. Halcogen can also be installed directly from the software DVD that is included in all Hercules development kits. The first step is to launch Halcogen. To start the Halcogen application, go to the Start menu and select Programs, Texas Instruments, Hercules, and finally Halcogen. To start a new Halcogen project, select File, New, Project. Once the new project window has opened, the device family and specific device must be selected. Then the name of the project can be entered along with the location for all the generated code to be stored. I'm using the RM48 HDK, and because we are evaluating the MIPSPY, I'm just going to call the project MIPSPY. Pick a folder on your local drive to save the project to. I already have a folder called Demos on my main drive, and that is where I'm going to store this project at. If the folder doesn't exist, Halcogen will ask if it can create the folder for you. Just say yes. Now that we have a new project, the first thing I like to do is click on the Drivers page and deselect every driver. Then I go back and only pick exactly what I need, which in this case is MIPSPY. Most pins on the Hercules microcontroller can have multiple functions and need to be configured properly before they can be used. Just click on the PinMux tab and select the modules you are using. If there is a conflict, it will be shown in the text box. If there is a conflict, you will need to scroll down until you see the conflict. Once you find the conflict, you can fix the issue by ensuring only one pin function is selected at a time. For this demo, we are not going to be connecting the microcontroller to an external device, so there's no need for the chip select function. Now we can configure the MIPSPY module by clicking on the tab labeled MIPSPY1. Halcogen pre-configures the module as a master with default settings, which is exactly what we want for our evaluation. To change your data format, use the MIPSPY1 data formats tab. To change the delay settings, use the MIPSPY1 delays tab. MIPSPY supports multiple transfer groups. To prove that changing these settings actually has an impact, I will go ahead and modify the length of transfer group 0 to 10. This value will come into play later when we are writing code in CoComposer Studio. The Port Settings tab allows you to configure unused module pins as general I.O. pins. The last thing we have to do in Halcogen is to generate our code. Just go to File, Save, and then File, Generate Code. Now that Halcogen has generated the driver code, we can use CoComposer Studio to write and test our user code. To start CoComposer Studio, go to the Start menu and select Programs, Texas Instruments, CoComposer Studio, and finally, CoComposer Studio. When CoComposer Studio launches, it will ask you to select a workspace. You should select the same folder you stored the Halcogen project in. This will create a workspace, which will hold all of your user settings as well as your project source files. Once CoComposer Studio launches, go to Project, New, CCS Project. In the Project Settings window, make sure you name the project the same thing you named your Halcogen project. By selecting the same name, this will allow CCS to automatically see the source files that were generated by Halcogen. Next, you need to select the correct processor. I'm using the RM48 HDK, which has an RM48L950 microcontroller. You also need to select the correct emulator. I'm using the onboard XDS100. Halcogen already generated our source files for us, so I'm just going to create an empty project. As you can see, the Halcogen generated .c and .h files have already been picked up by CCS. The first thing I like to do when I have a brand new project is to go into the project settings and add the Halcogen generated include folder. 
This tells the compiler where it can find our various function definitions. To add the include folder, just click on the add button. Select workspaces and finally select the include folder. While we are in the project settings, let me show you one way you can speed up your debugging. Click on debug, then select flash settings and finally select necessary sectors only under the erase options. This tells CCS to only erase the minimum number of required sectors needed to store our compiled code. On large flash devices such as the RM48L950, this can speed up the programming phase when launching the debugger. Now we can start writing code. The user entry point is the main function stored in sys underscore main dot c. Before I write any significant amount of code, I like to make sure my build process works. For now, I'm just going to put an infinite loop inside of my main function. To build the project, just click on the hammer in the toolbar. If there are any errors in the build process, they will show up in the problems window located at the bottom right. Since we have no errors, we can launch the debugger by clicking on the bug icon in the toolbar. Once the debugger finishes launching, it will place the program counter at the main function. To run the program, just click on the play icon in the toolbar. To pause the running program, just click on the pause icon. As expected, the program is still pointing at the same line, which makes sense as it is an infinite loop. Everything looks like it is working properly, so now we can add some more meaningful code. To stop debugging, you can click on the red terminate button, or what I do is just go back to the edit perspective. This leaves the debugger running in the background, which makes it faster to relaunch. To start writing MIPSPY code, we need to first include the MIPSPY header file. Now I'm going to create a transmit and receive buffer. I'm just putting some dummy values in the transmit buffer, and I'm setting the length of the receive buffer to 10 because, as you recall in the Halkogen project earlier, we set the length of the transfer group 0 to 10. When using Halkogen to generate your drivers, you also need to initialize the driver before you can use it. You can initialize the driver by calling the MIPSPY init function. This function call and other MIPSPY specific function call definitions can be found in the Halkogen generated MIPSPY.h file. MIPSPY set data function updates the data for the specified transfer group. The length of the data must match the length of the transfer group. In Halkogen, we configured transfer group 0 to have a length of 10, so that is what we are going to put for the second parameter. The MIPSPY transfer function initiates a transfer for the specified transfer group. The MIPSPY is transfer complete function checks to see if the transfer for the specified transfer group has finished. The MIPSPY get data function transfers the data from the specified transfer group to the receive buffer. The length of the buffer must match the length of the transfer group. Again, to look at more of the details about these function calls, just look in the MIPSPY.c and the MIPSPY.h files. Now we can build the project again. If there are no errors, CCS will ask us if we want to reload the program. Just say yes. Once the build has finished, go back to the debug perspective. Notice the variables window in the top right. Let's make our buffers easier to read by changing the format to hex. As you can see, the buffers just have uninitialized garbage in them as we haven't run the program yet. Before we run, let's put a breakpoint at our infinite loop. Now just click Run. The program will stop once it hits the breakpoint. If we look at the buffers now, you can see the transmit buffer has what we expect, and the receive buffer has all Fs. All Fs in the receive buffer is expected because there's nothing externally connected to the receive pin. If you connect a scope to the transmit pin, you would see 10 16-bit words shifting out. Now let's make this a little more interesting by enabling the internal loopback feature. This time, I just edited the code while in the debug perspective. Let's build and reload the code again. Before we run again, we need to move our breakpoint back to the infinite loop. Now click the Run button. This time, the receive buffer has the same values as the transmit buffer which means the internal loopback worked. If you change the second parameter of the MIPSPY enable loopback function to analog, you will be able to see the data being shifted out on the transmit pin with a scope.
Just like before, our receive buffer shows exactly what our transmit buffer shifted out. Once you are done debugging, you can quit your session by clicking on the red Terminate button. There are a number of online resources available where you can go to get more information about Hercules microcontrollers. The first is the Hercules web pages that are on ti.com. Here you can download official device data sheets, technical reference manuals, and application notes. You can also download software like Halcogen, NowFlash, and the high-end timer integrated development environment. You can also order development kits through the TI eStore from these web pages. The next online resource that is at your disposal is the TI Engineer to Engineer or E2E support forum. Here you can find the latest news and announcements about Hercules MCUs in addition to searching for technical content about Hercules. There is also a team of applications engineers available to answer questions posted on this forum. The final web-based resource is the Hercules Wikis. These sites feature how-to guides, introduction videos, and general information about the Hercules MCUs. The wikis also contain useful information like development kit, board schematics, and training content. I hope that you have found this video useful. Thank you for watching.